Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Lisa McAllister from Johnson & Johnson, and we're going to talk about all things ability on the Myopia Podcast. Welcome to the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode of Myopia Podcast. I'm so stoked to have you here. I am joined by the lovely uh, Lisa McAllister. It's awesome to have you. How are you, Lisa? I'm great. How are you? Thanks for having me. I am uh, I am really, really excited about some things. Uh, this last week, I spent a ton of time educating a bunch of doctors about myopia, and they were really, really excited. And so that makes me excited, and I'm stoked to talk with you. Lisa, you are doing amazing things in the world of myopia, and you're helping a lot of doctors with J&J. Uh, tell me a little bit about you and uh, a little bit about this role of yours at J&J. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited to be here, by the way, and I love um, hearing every single day how more and more doctors are getting into the space of myopia management. So this is a, a you know, something that we're all doing together. And I, I love to hear that more and more doctors are getting interested. So thank you for all you're doing in this space as well. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I, um, I have been working on myopia management for Johnson and Johnson for over four, about four and a half years now. Uh, in my previous role, I was, um, our, our, our strategy director, or sometimes you could refer to it as chief of staff for, uh, our president, previ our previous president. And, um, I got the opportunity to start working on our myopia strategy then alongside some of our amazing R and D colleagues like Dr. Noel Brennan and Dr. Sue Chang, as you know, our, our pipeline was starting to come together from a myopia management perspective. Um, and so I have, slowly grown in this role. I've had the opportunity to uh, work with an amazing team to create the strategy for Johnson & Johnson's entry into myopia management. And then I've had the distinct privilege of getting us started from a business perspective. So um, yeah. I, I, you know, was our, our first commercial employee, I guess you would say, from a myopia management perspective. Um, and now I'm so incredibly privileged to work alongside a team of um, you know commercial colleagues, R and D colleagues, regulatory, et cetera, all focused on how we can uh, build the myopia management category and help as many children as possible. Yeah, I think putting you in charge was not a myopic decision. I just have to say, <laughs> uh, I think there was a, a strategy built around that, and uh, it was probably that you guys were chatting in a room and somebody's like, "Who's going to do the myopia?" And you're like, "I don't know. I think I could take on that little project." Uh, it is you it is it is quite the privilege to be able to to represent and work with um Johnson and Johnson as we enter this space. Um yes, as you know absolutely. there's millions and millions and millions of children that uh need myopia management therapy around the world and um to both, you know, make their vision a little better today and protect their sight for the future. So we're, you know, I'm incredibly privileged to work on this every day. So yeah, and you know, I think um, I think the, uh, the the concern that some people have in the space is, uh, you know, more companies are just going to be competing for myopia, and um, you know, just in the U.S., if there's three million, which I think that's a really small number, but three mm -hmm. million myopes, uh, yeah, I think we're probably encountering. Um, maybe 10 20 percent of that if if we're lucky and so that's yeah it's so um you guys would be happy with 10 or 15 percent right uh 20 percent would be would be fine it's we just, are we're going not even to close right i mean you know uh, we we are are happy to be in this space and our our focus right now is really helping to grow the category yeah. Um, you know, of course we have, we have products that we sell, um, but our biggest opportunity we have right now is raising awareness with both, um, eye care professionals, both optometrists and ophthalmology on, on why, 
uh, mm -hmm. why myopia, why to be, you know, treating patients from a myopia management perspective, and then also helping raise awareness for parents that um, this yeah. is different than what they knew as kids, right? There's new yeah. learning, there's new science. And the more patients we can drive into ECP offices, the better. And um, we're, we're just, we're really excited about the opportunity. And honestly, the, you know, we talk a lot about standard of care. And ultimately, we would like to see myopia management be the standard of care for children who are progressing or who are likely to progress. So that's what we're yeah. focused on. Yeah, I I think that uh, such a key component is the raising of the awareness. And, um, you know, the AOA can do their part and uh, the academy and, uh, you know, all of the organizations, but without the work of GMAC and then each individual company really pushing that envelope, uh, we're not going to get there. We have to do it all together and gaining market share. I mean, that's going to come, right? But we have to create the market and help everybody understand the value of what we're yeah. really, really bringing. And I think that's uh, misconstrued by people in, in a lot of ways. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that. I did want to ask you, um, you've already uh, been making some, um, some tides here in the US with a, a product. You've got a product in Canada that's available. Mm -hmm. um, what can you speak? To, with regards to your current offerings, mm -hmm. and then can you share a little bit of pipeline stuff uh, <laughs> of what you think is is happening in the future, as much as you're capable, of course. Of course, of course. So, um, yeah. So you are correct. Uh, we have um, we have two products currently uh, in um, several markets uh, uh, across the world today. So we have, um, in the U.S., we have our Ability Overnight uh, yep. therapeutic lenses for myopia management. We just call them and Ability Overnight. And may I just overnight. stop you? Can you share just a little bit of what sure. that product is and yeah. uh, how it may be different than other ortho -K? Of course. Um, so uh, Ability Overnight is an orthokeratology lens, a topography-guided orthokeratology lens, uh, and we are we are really really excited about um, what we think is the gold standard of orthokeratology fitting being topography guided. Um, there's so much accuracy and you know amazing fit that can come by looking at the topography of every patient's eye, right? So uh, we are fully topography guided, fully uh, uh, fully software based. From a fitting perspective, we actually just launched some new software updates two weeks ago that make the fitting really fast and easy. And um, we have consultants available to help you um, troubleshoot the lens if needed. Uh, but we're really proud to say we have um, a 90% first fit success rate from a spherical perspective and a 95% first fit success rate uh, on our um, toric lenses. And then um, we are, we are, it is on the uh, Aminicon Z material and has a very, very high uh, DK. Um, mm -hmm. So we are just in general, really excited about this product. Um, we've seen um, success building over time. We're excited about the momentum we're seeing. Um, and one of our keys to success with this product and others is that we have our clinical sales consultant team. Uh, of, the, uh, of individuals that are working side by side with our doctors to get them um, started and help them become successful um, from a from a myopia management perspective and pulling through um, the products that we have available. So yeah. that's ability overnight. Yeah, and and the cool thing about it is I've seen the software. I know we want to get to the other ones that I asked you about them, but the cool thing about the software is it's like this. Like you're looking at a screen and it's asking you to make a couple of decisions. So you're not like having to look at the topography and be like, okay, the base curve. It's like just guides you through the process, asks you the questions and you get to make a decision. And then you can ask for help if you don't know the answer to the question. Yeah. Uh, but I think I love that. It's, um, it's, I, I, I don't mean to oversimplify it, 
but it's like an easy way to get started. Like, especially for people who are new fits, who we really need a lot of people needing new fits with ortho K. Exactly. And, you know, uh, that's why that's one of the reasons we're most excited. I mean, we talked about a few minutes ago how we want to expand the category. And that means we want to have, um, you know, of course, more patients coming in to get therapy. But if there are doctors who want to get into myopia management, we want to support them in that. And orthokeratology is still the most preferred way globally to manage myopia. So we um, are are delighted to have a solution that makes it easy for people to get started with orthokeratology. Mm -hmm. Well, it it wasn't just something you threw together. It is very polished. It's very sharp looking, easy to use. And that's what we need. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Keep no, going. What else no, it's we okay. Well, um, we also have our ability one day. So our avail- ability one day therapeutic lenses for myopia management. Again, another uh, <laughs> mouthful from a product per a product name perspective. But our uh, ability one day is our um, soft contact lens for myopia management. Uh, it is available currently in Canada, Singapore, and Hong Kong, so not yet available in other markets. Um, but we are very excited about this lens um, for, for many reasons. Um, but this lens was created from the ground up to manage myopia. Um, it is optimized for kids' eyes and um, with some novel uh, optics technology included that um, is really revolutionary. And um, we're, we're very excited about the results we're seeing um, from our early clinical trials and um, additional work that we're doing from a trial perspective. So I can't mm-hmm. talk a whole lot more about it because it's not right. yet approved in the US, but i yep. um, really excited about that product as well. Yeah. Well, if you are, we have tons of listeners in, in Canada and Asia. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. Certainly, if it's uh, something you have not yet tried, make sure to uh, be on the lookout for it. Uh, having spoken in Canada, Singapore, and Hong Kong, I know that those markets are right for it, and as of as of it is, and we're excited to get it in the U.S. Absolutely. And um, um, yes, what's uh, what else? What else? I'm just yeah. Leave it quiet in case you say anything mm-hmm. exciting. No, no. So, um, you know, we. So when we think about um, myopia management, we believe um, that all therapies are critical. Um, You know, every child's lifestyle and health needs are different, right? And so um, we we are excited about all the different therapeutic options in the market right now. And we're constantly on the lookout for what the next thing will be that we bring into the portfolio. Um, We're also very interested in ways to make it easier to find um, doctors, easier to um, be compliant in whatever therapy you're in and help parents and um, patients, you know, co-manage their therapeutic offerings. Um, So we are, we're looking to expand in in many ways. So much more to come. This is just the beginning for Johnson & Johnson in the space of myopia management. Well, that is very exciting, and I think that with the powerhouse of of, of Johnson and Johnson and 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 the work that you do, both in the R and D, I know a lot of the researchers that you have, and they're incredible people, mm-hmm. but also the technological aspects of it, right? For where we're going to be in AI in five and ten years, where we're going to be as far as being able to connect with people through social media and the next generation and iteration of social media. Mm-hmm. how our practitioners are going to be seeing things very differently. I'm very glad that you're in this space because, you know, you're one of the major drivers of this. And so this is uh, this is really a, 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 an interesting thing. Having had little glimpses behind the curtain every once in a while, it's really mm-hmm. cool to see the stuff that you have. Yeah we're, yeah, we're we're excited. And, you know, the things that we're working on today are, are, are great as well. We have a... Uh, for for doctors who are up and running and activated on our product, we have um, media campaigns, uh, Facebook and Instagram media ads that are running to raise awareness of myopia and then try and drive parents and patients into their offices. So we are trying a lot of new things, not only from a product perspective, but to really um, you know use the latest technology 
and reach parents and ECPs where they want to be reached today. So we're we're um, we're excited about you know uh, using the newest technology um, to connect uh, caregivers to uh, you know another healthcare provider in order to manage their their kids' myopia. So we're excited yeah. about our efforts there too. Yeah. All right. So this um, this is kind of an interesting uh, question for you is when you go to a cocktail party or a mom's party or a, a family party or a school party and somebody says, uh, Lisa, what do you do? What is your elevator pitch for <laughs> uh, myopia and how you are a myopia slayer? Yeah, that's a really great question. Well, first of all, I'll tell you, I have an almost three-year-old. And so we have we have um, created a narrative for him about when, when mommy's gone, why is mommy gone? And um, I simply say to him that I'm trying to m- help as many kids see as long as possible in their lives. So he's mm-hmm. like, okay, mommy, I don't know what that means, but we're trying to, <laughs> you know, help him understand, you know, why I need to be on the road sometimes. So that's my three-year-old uh, elevator pitch. Um, two other- Lisa, you yeah. may just want to cover his eyes and saying, I'm making sure kids don't go blind. <laughs> that's, that's, you know what? That would make it more, even more simple. I'm probably <laughs> overcomplicating it for him. You're right. <laughs> uh, he did ask though, uh, repeatedly to go get his eyes checked. Um, so we did take him for a comprehensive exam. He was two and a half and he did fantastic. He even let them take topography. We got retinal images and it was, it was amazing. So I think he's, you know, starting to tie it together. So that's Uh good. Um, (laughs) but so my elevator speech to, um, if I'm at a cocktail party or around people who don't know the category, um, I, the the one thing I always say is, remember how when you were a kid and either you or your friends would go get their eyes checked and every year their prescription would get worse and they'd be like, oh man, I guess I got to change my prescription. Um, And it was kind of, that was it, right? It was, it was, that was the way it is. That's how it was accepted. And that's everybody moved on from there. What I tell them is that is not normal. What that actually means is that your eye or your children's eye or whoever is lengthening, and that can potentially cause blindness later in life. So we shouldn't be okay with our prescription getting every, but worse every year. Um, And we should try and slow that down. And that's what my team works on is how to work to try and slow down that, uh, that eye lengthening so that we can protect sight later in life. I love it. And I love that you're talking about eye lengthening, right? My uh, my definition that I am sh- I'm spreading to the world is myopia is a progressive disease that causes the eyeball to lengthen, mm-hmm. resulting in symptoms of blurry vision, mm-hmm. worsening of the disease state. Yep. Right. We, so it, it's all about the, the growth, right? The growth of the eyeball. It, exactly. You know, we have a very, very similar definition we're using, which I, I love. You know, we say myopia is a chronic progressive disease um, that is, you know, manifesting in the lengthening of the eyeball. And one of the side effects or symptoms is blurry vision. So we, you know, I love that we're, we have a similar talk track. And yeah. I think if if all of us were starting to use the same language, it would be easier to move parents to action because they would understand that what is normal, what they think is normal is just a side effect. They're not actually addressing the symptomatic or they're not actually addressing the disease itself. They're only addressing symptoms. So I I love that. So I love that we're so closely aligned. (laughs) I, I, it doesn't surprise me and I am also (laughs) delighted. Right. Well, this is awesome. I wanted to uh, give everybody who, uh, and many of our listeners are already uh, users of Ability and um, are knowing what's happening in the world of J&J. But for those that are not, I wanted to make sure that they were aware and also get to meet you, um, yeah. you know, as the uh, as the captain of the ship. And you've got incredible people 
that are keeping everything afloat and are working so hard. I've met many of them. I know people from the research side to the sales side, and I'm super stoked and really glad for the last um, four years. Uh, they've gone by very quickly. Yes. Um, and, uh, and where we are at today. So, uh, anything that you want to leave the group with that we haven't already shared? No, I would just say, well, first of all, thank you for having me and thank you for, um, allowing us to continue to have a platform to build the category together. Um, you know, like we opened and said, we're, we're all in this together. And, um, as an industry, uh, you know, whether we're manufacturers, associations, practice owners, ECPs who are practicing, we all uh, should work together to do everything we can to um, help protect children's vision. So um, later in life. So very, very excited and happy to be here. I will put a plug in too for um, GMAC, the Global Myopia Awareness Coalition. Uh, I am, you know, I have the privilege of being the board chair this year, representing um, an incredible group of um, manufacturers, associations, um, NGOs, et cetera, all working together to raise awareness of myopia. So if you would love to get, if you'd like to get involved and learn more, you can um, visit the GMAC website at um, myopiaawareness.org. Um, and then for uh, those who are interested more, interested in more from Johnson & Johnson Vision, um, you know, feel free to reach out. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. You can visit our website, which is seeyourability.com. Um, or, you know, we've got, uh, you can reach to any of our salespeople that you um, would work with from a Johnson & Johnson vision perspective, and they can connect you to our myopia team. So really, really appreciate awesome. the time. And thank you yeah. so much for having me. Well, thank you. And thank you for listening to this episode of the Myopia Pod Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends so that we can protect more kiddos' eyes and make myopia matter. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in to the Myopia Podcast. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.